I'm Carol, and I conduct research to understand people and problems and to help uh, my teammates to be able to identify solutions for them to make great experiences. I'm Rotem, and I build games that challenge people and teach them how to develop their cybersecurity skills. My name is Ipek, and uh, I actually do research for software engineering, and if that, what that really means is also a mystery. My name is Ritme Gupta, uh, and day to day, my job is basically making sure that machines are working with humans as well as possible. I'm Forrest, I'm a researcher at the Software Engineering Institute, and what I've researched over my career has been new practices for building software better. I'm Barbara, and I help people understand problems and come up with human-centered solutions. I'm Mervin, and I fix computer hardware and software issues for users. I'm Brett, and I help organizations understand what risk means to them. I'm Hassan, I'm helping software engineers and system builders build up the software better and quicker. I'm Grace, and I solve very cool and interesting software engineering problems every day. I am originally from the Czech Republic. I was born in New Delhi in India. I lived for a couple of years in, in Venezuela. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm a first generation American. My parents moved to the U.S. in the 60s, you know, looking for the American dream. I grew up um, spending a couple of years in Israel, a couple of years in the United States. Grew up in Charleston, West Virginia. Guyana, which is in South America. Grew up in Philadelphia. I grew up in Turkey. Akron, Ohio, which is a, a smaller city just south of Cleveland. So I grew up a Browns fan, even though Pittsburgh's in the back. Oh, as a young kid, I was really enjoying solving the math problems. When I walk outside, when I play any games, my brain was really thinking, what is the shortest way I can go? It's always about like asking for myself, how can I use a math calculations or something on my work that makes me happy? Certain things that, that I would want as a kid, I didn't have um, in terms of certain toys. So you had to come up with ways to make your own toys. So you make matchbox vehicles and arrows and bows. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone kind of did that. I really got into photography at a young age. My first camera, which was a disc camera, they came with these um, reels and it would turn in the camera. And uh, throughout my uh, you know, elementary through high school, I was taking photos and actually ended up pursuing that um, as a career initially when I got out of college. I went to a, a liberal arts college, and so there was a lot of things I did other than just computer science. I found them all fascinating. You know, I uh, had a, almost had a minor in history, actually. And some of the professors asked me to consider going off to graduate school in history. So I always think, you know, ended up maybe staying with computers because that was what was comfortable, but you know, things could have gone a lot of different ways, actually. But, you know, like history, like I feel like historians have the skill where they know when to dig deeper and when to make these, when to ask the question why and how. Um, no matter how, like, you know, STEM you get, there's always a history and, and the, the work that you're doing um, can be analyzed using so many historical lenses that lead to better STEM insights. I come from a Hispanic family. I'm a first generation American and a big deal in Hispanic families is when you turn 15, quinceañera. Usually there's like a big party, a big thing, but I, you know, my, my parents said, look, um, you can have that if you want to. It would be strange because that's not you, but you can have that if you want to. But the other option that they gave me was, was um, would you want to spend that money on a, on, a, on a computer instead? Because again, I had, I had enrolled in this class and obviously not many people had computers at home back then. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. It was probably a very expensive, expensive computer. But the fact that, that, that they, they supported this was, was very important for me. The fact that they would give me that option and also recognize that you're probably gonna like this, like this better. I think that was, that was great. Believe it or not, um, my aha moment actually was me sitting in a research lab getting paid to play with Lego. Well, I hooked up a very directional Wi-Fi antenna to what was essentially the Lego uh, Mindstorms brick that I was controlling through Bluetooth. And what I had been able to do is create uh, a couple of Python scripts, really, that would automatically orient the antenna to get me uh, an activity, no matter where the signal source was from, in a minimal amount of time. And this was great for two reasons. One, I accomplished my research goal. And two, I could, I could connect to the campus Wi-Fi from my off-campus apartment and I didn't pay for internet. Anymore. So I knew that I was, you know, I'd made something that was both valuable for research and that, you know, on a very personal level, made my life better. I believe it was about 
probably eighth grade, um, potentially beginning of ninth grade, when I bought my first uh, coding book, HTML, and I decided that I was going to code this website by hand. And at, at the time, I discovered ancient Egypt. I was obsessed with the gods and goddesses and pharaohs. And I was on the internet already. I think we were one of the first people like around my in my circle of friends that had a computer. And there was nothing on the internet that I thought was doing a really good job of creating a list of these ancient Egyptian pharaohs and gods and goddesses. So I decided that I would code a website that would list all these gods and goddesses and pharaohs uh, from all these different sources on the internet. And I coded that by hand in Notepad, writing a little uh, HTML code and then previewing it in the browser. And uh, that was my first first kind of big project because I thought none of the other ones were, were doing a good job. And kind of looking back at it now, it makes perfect sense because I am all about information and organizing information and everything has to make sense. And so I decided to fix that with this website that I that I coded. What would I tell my younger self? That's yeah. it. <laughs> Don't stress about picking the right major. Your undergraduate degree is just the first step. Even if you're not exactly sure that that is what you want to do for the rest of your life, you can al you can always uh, switch careers. So not to, not to stress about that. I wish that when I was younger, that I would have taken that plunge, being less scared about what the future and what the career has to hold. Taking more risks, going with your gut, I think trusting uh, more my own intuition and not um, just hoping for the best, but rather seeing things for what they are. Try out the Mohawk, see how it looks. You're not going to be able to for long. As Winston Churchill once said, uh, you know, it, it's like breakfast. You know, you're either the pig that's committed or you're the chicken that contributes. Be the pig, you know, invest yourself. Make sure that you uh, go full bore and, and just deliver your best effort and you'll be happy. And if there's something that you want to accomplish um, and there's people that are in your way or someone who tells you you can't do that, just fight it, right? Just keep doing awesome things and either those people will stop or they'll put up kind of a fight and then by you just doing good work, you know, other people will notice and help you fight against whatever is in the way of you accomplishing your thing.